I'm Dr. Ernest Jackson, and I'm honored to share with you the living Word of God. We're continuing in sharing knowledge of the scriptures concerning us, concerning examining ourselves, concerning the application thereof, and considering endurance. We want not just to be saved, we want to last. Uh, we shouldn't just be saved, we should be here to last. And so I'm sharing these different things along the lines as I had done for weeks and months, telling you the things that we should have in place. And it's important to get these things in place before we need them in place, before we have to have them and we thereby falter or fail. That's not what we're here to do. Um, let me say at the onset, like I've said on different occasions, it's important that you have the salvation of the scriptures in place in your life. If we don't, these applications won't work. We're going to share with you some things this week from different patriarchs in applying them to our lives so we can endure. So we already know we're talking about examining ourselves, application, and endurance. But in parentheses, remember them guys? <laughs> in parentheses, we're going to stick a couple other things in it. So you might want to put in parentheses this. Moses, Aaron, Joshua, Joseph, and me. I said me because I don't want, want to say you, but that's what you put down. You put down me because it applies to you as you being me. <laughs> or being you, but you, you're me. You're applying this to me, to my, my own life. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, this is funny. We need to look at me. We need to look in the mirror and see me, the man in the mirror. We need to look at and see what applications we can glean from these patriarchs to keep us from failing. And we're going to point out some and we're going to, ooh, we're going to delve into some things. So, but I've got another word that I want to share with you. And the word is discipline. The word is discipline. And discipline means, or discipline is, it's the self-control that is gained by requiring rules or orders to be obeyed. So we discipline ourselves by obeying God's word. So you, if you don't have a regiment in your life, you can't be disciplined. You've got to have some kind of regiment. And we have habits, and habits are re and regiments can look alike, but regiments are forceful. Habits can make themselves. Did you get that? I'm in the habit of praying. Well, you just, you know, you done fell into that. But a regiment is something you set up as applying to we being the children of God, something that you set up and you maintain that intentionally, watching over it regularly to maintain that before God and thereby you obeying his word, his law, like he told Israel, except you keep my commandments, my statutes, you know, he named four different things. You cannot be my disciple. You're not obeying me. See, this is what we haven't figured out yet. The way we had church, the way we did church for years and years and years was a good starting place. You can't stay there. We must grow and develop. So I want us to get a good look at some things and we must be disciplined. And the discipline must take place even when things aren't going your way. You have the ability to keep working even on some things, even though things are not favorable. They become difficult. You continue to work. 
and you continue, continue to shuffle your time, shuffle your efforts, meaning throughout the day, your intention is always to obey God. That's what it should be. And that doesn't mean just I intend to, but I'm going to do that. I wake up in the morning, the most important thing on my mind and my heart is for me to obey God continually, continuing from yesterday. Not doing this accidentally or haphazardly. Well, you know, I, I talked with one guy. He said, yeah, well, you know, I didn't do so good today. I sinned against God. But tomorrow's another day. We can start all over. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Where, where'd you get that? We need to eradicate things that people have passed on and said and replace it with the Word of God because I found that God's only going to move behind His Word, not behind what we say or what we feel or what we believe. You remember on last week at the end of the message I talked about we say we believe a lot of things. We believe God. We believe His Word. But that's not what was in the book. God told Moses and Aaron, his brother, ye, be, ye believe me not. And we're going to go over that because it's important for us to know you have to be committed to this all the way through. Now we'll find out this week, you know, we often talk about how God killed Moses. He killed Aaron first. <laughs> he killed Aaron first. And he stripped him. This was the high priest that came. He was the one that went behind the veil, not Moses. Aaron was. But he had to wear what God wanted him to wear. And when he, see, when they hit the rock, when God told him to speak to the rock, it was both of them. Because remember, Moses told Aaron what to say. He was his prophet. So in the interim, what he could have said, Aaron could have said, no, no look, Mo, I ain't saying that. God going to get me. But he didn't. So the point in case is you obey God if your brother, your mother, your sister, your uncle, your cousin doesn't want to. Because guess what? When God come a coming, <laughs> when he shows up, he ain't killing me over your mess. And he will show up. We're going to see that. Okay? Remember now, we're talking about we got the same, you know, foundation of, of, of thinking, but we want to let you know we, in this message, we're going to share about Moses, Aaron, Joshua, Joseph, and you, or as in me, you speaking to you. This applies to me because we got to start applying this stuff. These things were written for our example, so we would know how to walk and how not to walk. Okay? Let's go over to the 20th chapter of Numbers again. Now when we get over there, we're going to go to the 5th verse rather than the 6th verse. So, Numbers 20 and 5. <clears throat> now there was a conversation that went on between Moses, Aaron, and the people. And the people said, Wherefore, in the 5th verse of the 20th chapter, Wherefore have ye... Have ye made us to come out of Egypt to bring us into this evil place. It is no place of seed or figs or vines or pomegranates, neither is there any water to drink. Now, whether you know the story or not, they was going by, uh, they went to the king of Eden and asked him could they pass through their land. They said, if we pass through the land, Let's pass through the land. We ain't going to drink your water. We ain't going to do nothing. We just need to pass through the land. And he forbid them to pass through the land. So they had to go on the border. Because they met with a huge company of people. They are ready to fight. So they went around and ended up at Mount Horeb. So Moses and uh, Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the doors of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell upon their face, and the glory of God appeared unto them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron, thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water. <laughs> 
and thou shalt bring forth to, to them water out of the rock. Now, there's a list of things on explanation. He says, so thou shalt give the congregation and the beasts drink. Give them their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod before, from before the Lord as he commanded him. Let me say this so you'll know. We're going to give you a scripture a little bit. You have to be courageous. When you're leading people, when you're working with people, when God has called you to do something, he puts you in a particular place. And when I say a particular place, that can be any place at any time. And let me help you out with something. Don't you conclude that that's the place of God for you. Don't you do it. Let him do it. We're so busy trying to be, we haven't covered the area of what we should do yet. We bid you trying to be, I know I'm in the place of God, you're trying to quote like Moses. <laughs> I mean, like, like Joseph, I know I'm in the place of God. You're trying to quote like Joseph. I'm in, I know I'm in the place of God. Really? How do you know? How do you know? Unless God tells you, you assume, don't do that. Don't try to be spiritual, because i got a secret I'm going to share with you. Here it comes. When God's ready for you to be anointed and to come forward, he'll do it in his season, and you just have to be there with your face hanging out just like you're doing now. So don't do nothing else. Don't try to be. One of the greatest testimonies I could give of my life, I, I didn't try to be, and I still don't try to be. And some of the most unique healings and miracles have passed through my life, and there's testimonies that can be backed up. And all I did was just stand there and obey God. Important. Don't try to be anointed. You don't know what anointed is. <laughs> we assume by we see where the folks have and we think that's anointed. That ain't anointed. It's not anointed. Uh, anyway, so and Moses got Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation before the rock and said unto them, Hear now ye rebels. They just ask for water. In this, you and I need to learn from Moses and Aaron. You don't take this personal. It's not about you. When they rejected Samuel, Samuel went to God and said, Look, they rejected me. God said, No, 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 no. They haven't rejected you. They rejected me. So if they rejected or rebelled, which they did, it would have been against God and not Moses, but Moses took it personal. Drink ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? Uh, you fetched it or did by your obedience God sent it? See what I'm saying about people trying to be recognized and trying to be anointed? Let God do what he wants to do with you. So, and Moses lifted up his hand 20, uh, 11 verse, excuse me, with his rod, and he smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly. And the congregation drank, and their beasts also. The Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron. <laughs> he said, Listen, because you believe me, you didn't believe me. If you had to believe me, Mo, Aaron, if you had to believe me, you'd have done exactly like I said. Like I said on last week, a lot of folks claim they believe God. No, you don't. You're not obeying his word. You don't believe him. Because look what he said. Because ye believe me not. Oh, to sanctify me, to keep things in order, keep things clean, flowing because of what I said and you do what I said. By the way, what Moses you and Aaron should know by now. Mo, you, you talked to me. We had a conversation like a man talked to another man face to face. And you, you turned out not doing what I told you to do. Aaron, what's your excuse? There had to be a conversation behind the scenes. Everything that takes place cannot be written down. Watch this. He said, therefore, ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. Now go down to the, um, let's see, go down to 24, 24 first. And when you get down to the 24th verse, you'll find out that God had called them up into the mount, Mount Horeb. 
And God said, look, go to 23. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the mount, in Mount Horeb, by the coast of the land of Edom, saying, Aaron shall be gathered unto his people. For he shall not enter into the land which I have given unto the children of Israel, because ye rebelled, rebelled against my word. That's what I wanted to get to. We say we believe God's word, but we don't obey it. So we don't believe it, and we don't believe him, because he and his word are one and the same. So now you rebel against my word. Look what the enemy got them doing. The same thing Adam and Eve did, rebelled against God's word, God's limitations. Somebody said, well, well we're supposed to be free more nations. God can't do this. Whoa, 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 whoa. The Almighty that made everything <laughs> and uphold everything with the word of his power? Uh, excuse me, hello, he can do whatever he want to do. So he sets the rules and we go by it. Uh, have you forgotten that we're not our own, but we're bought with a price? Have we forgotten that? I think we have. So you ain't going to enter in because ye rebelled against my word at the water and then in the place. Watch this. So God goes, take Aaron and Eleazar, his son, and bring them up unto the mount. And strip Aaron. Look at this. Let me, I wanted to go this way because I want you to see something else. I've heard people say, well, you know, once God has spoke a word or prophesied a word, it's gone out. It ain't going to come back void. He spoke that in certain situations. Do you not know what he spoke? originally to Aaron to be the high priest because of Aaron's actions God revoked that he revoked his own word and told him said look he's not going he didn't do like I tell him bring him up to the mount and then told his own brother to strip him all the you know the, the garb that I had put on him the head you know cap that he had on and all you know the, the 12 tribes of Israel and all that representation and the robes and so God said strip him strip Aaron of his garments and put him on Eleazar his son and Aaron shall be gathered to his people and shall die there watch this and Moses did as the Lord commanded and they went up into the Mount Mount Horeb in the sight of all the congregation well you ain't gonna let you ain't gonna let the whole congregation see you obey me then the whole congregation came to see you die. No man is outside the limits of God, as they say in our country. No man is above the law. No man is above the word of God. We forget that. And because we, we, we're, we're taught in such era that we think we have more liberty than God has given us. Big mistake. And Moses did as the Lord had commanded, and they went up into the Mount Orb, and in sight of all the congregation, Moses, and Moses stripped Aaron of his garment and put him on Eleazar, his son, and Aaron died there at the top of the mount. God killed him instantly, took his life, just like that. But they, but, but, but they just got there. What, a couple of days later, maybe? God took his life. God said, I forgot what you did. You're not going. I'm stripping you in front of everybody because I anointed you. Watch this. I anointed you in front of everybody. I put my honor and my glory on you, Aaron. Now I'm going to strip you. Can I say this? This God of ours is real and he's nothing to toy with. This is how I know a lot of people believe there is a God, but they believe there is a God to the limit of their imagination and not to the limits of his word. I, I read a scripture, I tried to share it one time, I can't see it right now, but I do know that it said how the waters were afraid of him. The, 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 wait, water was afraid of God? It's in the book. It's in, it's in there, believe me, I've read it. So the water's afraid of him and you're not? That means water has more sense than some people, don't it? Whoops. <laughs> so, 
that was that was the end of him, and he was dead. Everybody saw him that he was dead. Now, let's go over to Romans. Know that you and I are supposed to obey the word of God, not alter it, not adjust it. Now, I do know that God used certain men to give us an understanding by putting definitions. Thank God for the ones he anointed to translate it from the original language. If I was you, I would try to understand the wordings with the original language. Get yourself a good study Bible where it gives you the definitions from the Greek and the Hebrew, and don't, let me say it this way, it's not always advantageous to buy a, a, an Americanized Bible because I found that in some of those Bibles they lose the original translation of the word, and I've even seen Bibles that have left scriptures out. I don't think they did it in tension, but uh, you know how that, that turns out. Let's go to Romans of six, 6 and 17. It's important to know that we start out obeying this word, obeying this gospel, and you should continue in it all the days of your life. They should have, and they didn't, and they paid a price. Aaron paid the price. Then God took him up, got Moses up, and let him see the land. This is the land I swore to give unto your fathers. You're not going over. I told you to speak to the rock, you hit the rock. So God killed him and buried him himself. That wasn't a good thing to me. I mean, you know, if God come to honor me and want to bury me, go ahead and bury me, God, but it wasn't a good situation. I'm not condemning, I'm not judging, I'm just saying it's not a good thing if God kills you himself. <laughs> Thank you not. Okay, watch this. But God be thanked that we were the servants of sin, but we have obeyed, watch this, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. And that form of doctrine mean it means like a die. So it means the original word that God formed. And what you're getting is a die, something that's stamped out of that. It's the same word. You have obeyed from the heart that same die, that same word that is passed down. Everyone that didn't obey it and hold it to their heart, they suffered for it. So can we. But let's not be of those that go into perdition for disobeying the word of God. Let's go over to Joshua. Now, after God decided to kill Moses, he raised Joshua up in his place, and he said, I think it's in this, the second verse, where God spoke to him and said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Only rise thou up and take this people over, and divide unto them the lands of promise. So, now we come unto the fifth verse of the first chapter of Joshua, Joshua 1 and 5. And we're going to go down to 8. Watch this. There shall not any man stand before you, before thee, all the days of thy life. Joshua, if you go ahead and do like I tell you and you stand up and live right, nobody's going to be able to stand before you to keep you from accomplishing my purpose. See, it's not about you, it's not about me, except we're in his program. And we're working toward his purpose. That's why he br brought us out of darkness into this marvelous light. To work with him. Remember, working with God to make the best you. This is what we're still supposed to be doing, working with him daily. When we become mature, we'll realize that it's not about us. By the way, uh, you can't get yourself out of sin. And if you do like Paul did in the seventh chapter of Romans, allow sin to get back in. Sin will control you. So that here's the apostle of God said in that seventh chapter, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He said, I'm serving, you know, in my mind I serve God, but my, you know, I serve my flesh too. Then he realized that if he completely walked behind the word of God and the spirit of God, he won't be condemned. There is therefore no condemnation in the first verse of the eighth chapter of Romans. There is therefore now no condemnation unto them which walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. 
So we have to make decisions, like I brought out on last week. Make decisions to walk in the right place after he gets you free. You come to an agreement, you surrender yourself again, he sets you completely free, free, excuse me, run for your life. Now he restores to you the life of God with the ability, one scripture says, to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God. You have to have power to walk in this life like the word says. You can't do it of yourself. Believe me, it don't work. You know how I know? Because you tried it and it didn't work. It ain't going to start working. Nip. With his life in us, we can live this. I've heard people for years say, man, live and save is hard. Oh my God. Well, that's because you're using only human effort. You can't live delivered. That's what saved means. Delivered, rescue, or set free. You can't do it of your own accord. You need him on the inside and then your obedience to follow. So, we see over here, he says, I tell you what, no man shall stand before you all the days of your life, and I will, as I was with Moses. Now, let me say this. People like to claim authority. They like to believe. I, oh, I claim that because people have told us to claim it. It's a lie. God didn't tell us to do that. Nowhere in the book. So, we're told to claim that. So, now you claim, I got the anointing of Moses. I got the anointing of Elijah. I got the... Uh, you got to sit down somewhere and be quiet. That's what you got to do. Why? Because you're showing the enemy foolishness and he will come for you. Believe me, I got saved at 15 and I came up with some young men, a lot of us young men that God saved the guys out of the projects. <laughs> After I got saved, my older brother got saved. And then we had a, a group of guys that looked like a gang going to church because God started saving folks. And if you're not careful, you can develop a hierarchy. I'm the leader, I'm the leader number two, I'm the leader number one, and next thing you know, everybody's trying to be a prophet and apostle and a this and a that, and all coming out of our soul nature and out of our flesh, which is destructive. Let God make you who he wants you to be, because that's the only way you're going to be, be it. If he has put a call on your life, you still can't be it till he develops it. Not you. I just thought I'd share that. So, <laughs> so God made the declaration to Joshua, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with thee. Let God do it, not you. <clears throat> and watch this, watch this. I will not, in the fifth verse, I will not fail thee. Oh, and I'm going to show you how to pray that. I used to say, I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. You can turn that into a prayer like this. In your time of praying and seeking God at home, I hope you do that. And then you can tell God, say, listen, God, you know what? I'm obeying you. First of all, make sure you put proper credentials before the master. A clean life, a sinless life, an obedient life, a faithful life. Well, there's so many things, a righteous life. All these things that he aspires should be in us, should be in us, before you start trying to claim anything anyway. But let's... I digress. Let's go back and talking about prayer. So in this, you could very easily say, you know, Lord, I saw what you did with Moses and I saw what you did with Joshua and you told Joshua you'll not forsake him and you'll not leave him. Lord, I, I need you in my life the same way. If you did it for Joshua, you can do it for me. Keep me in courage so, I, so I'll know that you'll not fail me and not forsake me. And then let him come in, because he, he will manifest himself to reassure you of that. You don't just believe it. Sometimes like people say, that, you know, just keep on saying it, keep on saying it until you believe it. Huh? And they don't know that the scripture said, we believe, we say it because we believe, not we say it because we're trying to believe and to convince ourselves that it's real. That's not what the book says. They don't say it that way. <laughs> then watch what he says. Well, I'll be with you. Watch this, watch this. I'm going to be with you, Josh, as I was with Moses. So shall I be with thee. I'm going to be right here, partner, and I'm not going to forsake you. Look, he said, I'm not going to fail you. Be strong. Uh-oh. And of good courage. 
For unto this people shall doubt divide the inheritance of the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous. Mean you're going to go through a lot of stuff, partner. Guess what? I said this months ago. I want to reiterate this. If you are mature and you can handle this, most of your contention in this life is not with this life like you think it is. Most of us don't know that behind the scenes, God is orchestrating stuff for you to be proven by. So you take your stand. And, you know, we're going to end up going into ooh, some stuff with Joseph for real. And maybe going to David after that. We'll see what the Lord says. But we're going to show you a lot of stuff that these people faced. God was behind the actions all the way through. And when we thought this one was against us, that was against us, this, this. and some people in there declared themselves. Joseph's brethren hated him. His daddy didn't help by making him a special coat. Because <laughs> people so now might, oh, 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 no, no, no. I've been around for 15 years already. I've been around for 30 years. And he makes him a coat? Believe me, folks are still like that. Some folks ain't delivered yet. Here, take the coat. Don't hate me here. Take the coat if that's, but see, here's what I do know. People like that, you can give them the coat. It doesn't satisfy their lust for things. It only pacifies them. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this coat looks better on me than it looks better on you. Anyway, look at me. I feel like this fit this coat better. I got, look, look, I got more muscles than you, Joseph. This, fit, this fits me better. Then he come along and he give Joseph a lamb. Now he wants a lamb. Are you getting what I'm saying? You're going to have people like this. It's how you react to how they react that makes the difference. Ooh. So you're going to have to face some things, and we're not ready to face some things. We think we are, but we're not. Let's go over to 2 Corinthians 2 and 17. You have to be courageous so that you're going to stand up for what is right. You're not going to, uh, what do I want to say? Uh, corrupt the word of God. Watch this. 2 Corinthians 2 and 17 and it says, For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. People are teaching off script. They're teaching their views and the views that they have is not what God revealed to them because it's not in the book. But they're teaching what they feel. Now watch this. God taught me something years ago. It's very important that even when he gives you a message, believe me, when the Lord gives me a message, I find two cold this bad boy. I do like, like you make a salad. <laughs> I get it tossed every thing. <laughs> and because all the scripture he gives me, I can't use all of them because it may be for a later time. So I have to go back and make sure this is the one. Do you want this one for this week? you want this one for this week, Lord? Do you want this one for this week? And, uh, and, and then I go back and ask the order that he wants me to present them to you in. Are you hearing this? And I do that to keep from corrupting his word so my flesh don't get in it. Because I found out the more of your flesh that is in it, the less of his anointing is in it. Because <clears throat> we can make the word of God of none effect by teaching doctrine. By teaching what we believe and what we feel and we're not given by God to say those things. And I remember Bishop uh, Jimmy Crack Corner, and I don't care, told me that uh, when he was preaching, <laughs> the Holy Ghost told him that. <laughs> I got ministers that are said unto me, and I told him, I said, look, you get up and preach. <laughs> they, I think they think I'm nuts. You better not get up preaching talking about the pastor said. What? Come in the back. I got to show you something. What I want to show you when you get back is the black eye. No, you, no, no, no. You don't put me on the chopping block so God get me. Either it's the word or you don't say it. <clears throat> Watch this. That as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, not as of God, but in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. We make sure we're saying what the Holy Ghost has dispensed. For that message, for that season, for that time. Because whether we know it or not, the body of Christ is worldwide. And the body of Christ needs to be nourished 
as a whole. And God has things that he want brought up out of his word to feed the body completely. And we have to be in unison by the Spirit of God. We, we, we Lord, help us. Oh, Jesus. Because <laughs> there are some things we're still wrestling with. Now, there are certain things. One thing I found out that ministers don't like to back up and correct themselves. Don't like that. Because, dun, 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 I'm the man of God. Okay, well, man of God, if you are the man of God and you say something wrong, go back and correct it because people know when you're wrong. 2 Corinthians 4 and 1. It's time as people of God to intentionally to denounce some things and let folks know clearly, I'm not a part of that. If they don't come to you, don't get involved. A lot of conversation we shouldn't be involved in because they gender strife in the first place. But should someone ask me, and I think, you know, first thing I'll check with the Holy Ghost, like, hmm, because all things are lawful but not expedient, meaning even though I may have knowledge of what the truth of that issue is, it may not need to be said right now just because you ask a question. Are you getting what I'm saying, ministers? It's time to know truth. Watch what it says here. Therefore, seeing we have this what? Ministry. Oh, you got a ministry? Okay. As we have received mercy, we faint not. We continue to present this word just like God said it, and only like he says it. Somebody may go, mm -mm. the message last week was better than this one. Okay. What happened? Talk to God. I, I think my folks know better than to show up at me ask me what happened. Because, uh... <laughs> Just bring your salt and your pepper and your ketchup, you know, mayonnaise and two pieces of bread because they know what's going to happen. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> but my folks know them. I'm coming this way. Okay, but have, look at it, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Oh my God. When are we going to look at the things that are going on around us, calling it ministry that we know is dishonest? When are we going to denounce those things? When are we going to turn them down? When are we going to say, no, I can't do this any longer? Hello? The people in the world are waking up, and some of the things that have been going on for years, they decided that they can't do it any longer, and so they're coming out and they're telling on folks. When are you going to come out and tell on yourself? Because <laughs> it ain't no good to be telling on other folks, and you ain't getting yourself cleared up. I'm all right. No, you're not. No, you're not. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judges another. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, because thou doest the same thing. You can't say I'm wrong, and, and you're doing the same thing, and you're okay. But have we not the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness? As I was coming, the Lord saved me at 15, I turned 16 the next month. And in my years of becoming a junior deacon and a deacon and a this and a that and working with folks, I saw a lot of things behind the scenes that were kind of shady. And things that were said behind the scenes that I wouldn't repeat. And I'm like, hmm. And I would go up, she's the evangelist, he's the prophet, and you know, I'm, hmm. I ain't going to do them no harm. But some of the things they said were wrong. So, <clears throat> we might have to judge between right and wrong and not judge the person. Because you have to grow and grow beyond foolishness. Not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. You must become courageous like Joshua. And know that the Lord will be with you if you be courageous to do the right thing. Because if you're doing the right thing for the right purposes, it's His purpose. And we can count on God being there because He's God. Don't put Him in a trick bag like He's going to be there no matter what. Because He loves you, because you're obedient, His Spirit and His power will rest on you anyway. Don't try to reach for nothing extra or special. 
Remember, whatever we're doing anyway, it's our reasonable service. Remember that? So we're waiting for horn to be blown. Dun, 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 dun. No. <laughs> but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves. So my, to, to say that I'm a man of God, for me to say it, which I don't say it, but for me to commend myself as a man of God is because I'm manifesting the word. To commend my ourselves, I'm doing what God told me to do, and I can commend myself and everyone around me in their consciousness. People should hear the word come out of you. You're a man of God, they should hear the word come out of you at all times. Because, you know, we're so filled with, oh, blah, 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 we're so, we're so filled with the Holy Ghost, we can't help but shake and fall down and get back up, and, and, but there's no word in there. You give me the word, and you keep the shaking. <clears throat> Some of us didn't get the shaking from God, no way. But uh, <clears throat> let's go down to verse 3. He said, but if our gospel, the real gospel is here, the most prominent thing is the gospel that changed lives. Set men and women, boys and girls free. That's the most important thing of all. Well, we you know we just started a new youth program. Uh, okay, are these youth delivered? Well, you know they're just teenagers. Oh, really? Wait till we go down further, what probably is going to be next week, when you find out what happened to Joseph at 17 years old. God's hand was on him, and all hell broke loose. Well, they're just 17. You know, you, no, no. Tell them about God. Let them make the decision where they want to live for them. Give them the right stuff. You, no, not this Mickey Mouse stuff. Here I go. You need to come to church. No, you need to be set free. Told you, Lord saved me at 15. I was on the street doing some stuff. And the Lord dealt with me. And God changed my life at 15 years old. So he can do it to your son and your daughter if you present Christ to them the right way. And if they decide to accept it, good. But don't pull the punches because there's a lot of 16, 17, 18 year olds that didn't make it to 20. Well, they got, they got enough time. No. Where you get that from? Tell them the truth so they don't be lost. You, somebody keeps saying, well, you know, he's coming back. No, he's not. He's going to come back. Because <laughs> if you say he's coming back, that means he done left already and he's, he's on his way back. I've even heard people say that. He's on his way back. Really? What give you that impression? I mean, like, you, you think heaven is that far away that uh, Jesus done got on a, a chariot and he's riding this way and he ain't got here yet? He's not on his way. He will be coming. But remember now, the chariot came and got the man of God, Elijah, and swept back up as a world, as in a whirlwind. You don't think Jesus can come back quicker than that? Surely he can. <laughs> Whether you know it or not, there's a manifestation where you can be here and then there. Because it was said of Elijah back in the scriptures. He said, you know what? He said, go tell Ahab that I said. I'm going to meet with him today. So the guy started off telling me, he said, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. You ain't fooling me. He said, what am I going to do? I go tell the king that you say you're going to be with him today, and I come back, and the Spirit of God sets you on the other side of the mountain. And you think Jesus can't come back quicker than that? But that's just me. I'm kind of crazy. Okay. <laughs> Look, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on the poor. We preach not ourselves. We preach not ourselves. We represent this word wholeheartedly and with skill, making sure the things he wants us to present is what we present. I remember one time years, 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 years ago, I got up and I, you know, I was saying some of the people were going to preach, and I went to going, and they come out preach, and I went to going, and when I got in the back, the Lord said, "You know what?" I'm like, "Yeah, Lord, I was wiping sweat." You didn't say what I told you to say. He said you got so caught up you forgot to say this, and then there was an emptiness. I began to weep because I, the emptiness was so strong. I thought he left me for good. And I'm only sharing this with you to let you know, if God has ordained you to do this thing, do it the right way or don't do it at all. 
Stay on point. And don't preach yourself. Are you hearing that? We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. And ourselves, I am your servant for Jesus' sake. I'm here to help you. I'm representing him. I'm not representing me. <laughs> oh, God, represent me. I'm the this, I'm the that. I'm, I'm going to get out your way so God don't kill the both of us. That's what I'm going to do. How about that? You can stand out front and bolster yourself if you like. Let's move on to Colossians 1, 25, 1, 25 and 26. When you get there, I'm reading. Where Paul said, when he wrote to the Colossians, he says, Wherefore I am a minister according to the dispensation of God. But God dispenses into me, Paul said. I dispense to you. I don't know, some of these young folks don't know, but remember you used to have the Pez dispensers? You can put the little thing in the bottom, slide the canes up, and then you hit the back part, and it shoots you out one, stick it right out, and there's pedal dispenser. That's what we're supposed to be. As he puts the word in us, we dispense it. We're supposed to give out word. Watch this. Dispensation of God, which is given to me, to you, word. And guess what it's given to me to do? To fulfill the word of God. Wow. Even the mysteries which have been hid from ages and from generations, but now it's made manifest to his saints through his ministers. That's what I'm here to do. Minister, that's what you're supposed to be here to do. And nothing else. If I was you, and I was, I made some moves because that way, look, I don't want to be over this, I don't want to be over that. If God has ordained me to minister the word of God, that's what I'm going to do. I don't want to raise the money, I don't want to do none of that. He's ordained me to give word. I give word. Don't send me over the children's program and all that. Because people, are, and I'm not fighting. Whatever you have going in your church, you the pastor, that's your prerogative. But it's more important to free yourselves to obey God by giving out his word. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Let me see. I need to get down here. Yeah, okay. Let's go to James 1 and 4. And it says, from whence come his wars and fighting among you? I heard that today. A lot of the conflict that is going on in people is going on inside of them. This is why we're not walking the way God wants us to walk. Because there's conflict, there's a war going on. And it comes of your members. You must get that broken so you can become a solid thinking person. A unified thinking person. Someone that's stable. So you can go forward and obey God. Because if you don't obey God, you can't be free. And you can't be free. You can't free anybody else. Are you there? Okay. You can go down and read 1 through... I think you're yeah, 1 through 5, but I'm, I need to move along. I want to show you something. Here's what I want to show you. There is a time in all of our lives that we... I've had things that have happened that were inexplicable. You couldn't explain them if you had to. I had people to lie on me. One time they had a lie up that I was shacking with four women. I'm like, huh? How you do that? And it wasn't me. But the people believed it. Just like when we get into the story of Joseph. Those things were said about him that weren't true, and people believed it. And I'm going to show you when we get into that next week what to do, what to look for, and what not to do. Know when not to go different places and know what not to say, know what not to put your hands on. And it's best to run with your coat. <laughs> we'll get into that. No, don't leave your coat. Brother, sister, don't leave your don't don't leave your sweater, sister, because it doesn't matter the gender. Don't leave your coat. Don't leave your sweater. You have to run. Take that with you. Oh, better yet, how about you not go there at all? <clears throat> let, let brother tell you. Where, don't go there. But look at this. I want to show you something over here in Genesis forty-five and three. Genesis 45 and 3. So, Joseph reveals himself to his brother. And he said in 45 and 3, And Joseph said unto his brother, I'm Joseph. Does my father yet live? 
And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his friend. They were like, oh, we, uh, <laughs> we put this boy in a hole and we sold him. We sold him. And here he is, running everything in Egypt. We done... <laughs> we messed up this time. <laughs> I got a lot of other expressions I can use. I won't use them. Cause I <laughs> and watch this. And Joseph said unto his brother, "Come near to me." They like, we tried to keep. Why would we? Why would we come near? What? Nobody coming near you? What are you? What are you crazy? What's this? Come near me. Come near to me. I pray you. And they came there, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold in Egypt. Like, oh my God, it's fresh on his mind, we sold him. That was 12 years ago. Why is it fresh on his mind? He's going to get us. Watch this. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves. Huh? Watch this. <laughs> Don't be angry with yourself that you sold me hither. Watch what he understood. For God did send me before you to preserve life. Here's this young man that goes, you know what? He's in his 30s now. I'm not calling him a young man because I'm twice his age. And he says, you know what? God sent me hither. It wasn't just you. It was God. He sent me hither. Watch this. To preserve life. For these, He said, for now two years they've had famine in the land. And yet there's five years in which there shall neither be earring, that's like having corn and whatnot, nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve your poster posterity in the earth. Your seed can continue. He sent me in front of you by you selling me. Uh, excuse me, Mr. God, do I have to get sold? You, you, you know, you wonder like... um. Am I going to go in the pit too? But here's the thing that you must understand. It's God's choosing. And i got news for you. If God's going to make you a great man, a great woman of God, <laughs> prepare yourself so I can tell you. Prepare yourself. Watch this. He said, for posterity in the earth and to save, look at this, your lives by a great deliverance. You hated me, you despised me, but God sent me ahead of you. So now, look, what we said in the eighth verse, so now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. Who would think that God would use his own brother's treachery to send him out and send him ahead to save their lives? <laughs> God sent me hither. God did this. And he has made me a father, not a brother, not a nephew, not a cousin, not a servant. I'm a father to, look, I'm a father to Pharaoh and Lord over his house, over all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. But you rascals sold me, but it was God's plan. What I'm trying to share with you is, it's important for us to make sure we're doing what God tells us to do. There are regiments we need to have in place. There's a walk we need to have in place. There's work that needs to be done in our lives. Work with God to get those things done because he has a plan for you. And if you think that means that you're just going to raise up and he's going to put you over 5,000 people and you're going to have finance coming in and you can just preach and run and all, wake up. That's not how God really does stuff. This is how he does stuff. Hope you heard that. <clears throat> he said, hasten, go up into my father and say to him, thus said thy son Joseph, God made me Lord of all Egypt. Oh, and they, God had a bigger plan than the sheaves standing up. Oh, so our sheaves are supposed to bow down to yours. Now his father kept it in his thinking. His father reasoned that. So I think about this. But his brothers decided they were going to get rid of him. And him being, their sheaves bowing to him is nothing compared to what God really did. 
you're going to have to suffer through some things. There are going to be some realities that are hard to swallow. And you need to know that. When he first saw his brothers, this wasn't the first time he saw them. Go to Genesis 42 and 7. When he first saw his brothers, and Joseph saw his brethren, Genesis 42 and 7. And Joseph first saw his brethren, and he knew them, but made himself strange unto them. And he spake roughly to them. Because when he first saw them, he said, there they are. Sell me. They didn't know who he was, and he spoke hard to them, rough, you know, rough. But, <laughs> go to uh, Genesis 50 and 15. And you'll find that when the brethren saw that the father died, they figured Joseph was coming for him for real. They sent a messenger to Joseph, go down, go down through the, uh, from the 15th through the 21st verse. And he said, the father told us, to, told you to give us a, a pardon to forgive us for what we said and did to you. And he went and fell down amongst his brethren. And behold, we said, we be your servants. We know we did stuff against you. 21st. Go down to 21, watch what happens. Now therefore, fear, now therefore, fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them. You knucklehead sold me. But now, because he allowed the heart of God to work in him, He's comforting them. He told them in the other scripture, look, don't blame yourselves. It was God the whole time. Now, you know God had to speak to that boy, although we'll go into some other things next week. But here you see that this young man had realized it was God all the time. Your contention in life, if you're going to live for him, is smart to take a position to know that if you're doing everything you're supposed to do, and the scripture said, God be for us, he's more than the world against us. He'll be for us if we're obedient and we're submissive. And then we can sit back and understand that God will bring us through, bring us out, bring us over, bring us under, whatever way pleases him, and that we can count on him. But watch at the end of this particular verse. It says that he comforted them and spake kindly. So when he first saw them, he spake rough. So all the time that they spoke to him, in, when we go back in Scripture, they spake rough. But at this time, he could comfort them that hated him. Oh my God. And speak kindly to him. 